Learning objectives include what is growth curve, what is a batch culture and uses of growth curve, and what is generation time and how we can calculate generation time. Now, a batch culture, basically, when we grow organism in a liquid medium and in a closed vessel like this here, what happens when the bacteria are growing in a liquid medium and in a closed vessel, uh, and we do not refresh the medium during this exercise, what happens is as the bacteria grow, the nutrients get depleted. They decrease. And at the same time, waste products, when the bacteria grow, they produce waste products. So they, the waste product increased. And this waste product, many of these waste products are acids. And they change the pH, which basically kills uh, the organisms. So the organisms, they're not getting enough nutrition. And also, they're being killed by the change in the pH. So <clears throat> what we see, if we follow the growth in this vessel, we take samples at different times. This is the time here. And if we see the pattern of growth, this is a zero time when we started. Let's say we started with some number of, you know, the number of organisms here. We would see if we follow this growth, uh, what we call a growth curve. We would see that initially for some time there is no growth. So as you can see that there's a plateau here. Uh, there's no, no growth. In, this is called a lag phase. Here the bacteria or the microbes are preparing uh, for the growth. They are synthesizing their DNA, they're adjusting to the environment, and then this phase is followed by an exponential growth of the organism, and this exponential growth is called log phase. Uh, here, the bacteria are replicating actively, but then after a while, as the time goes by, you could see that the organism, as they, the new organisms are generated, the, the same number of also dies. So there is an equilibrium between a new uh, cells or new organisms that are created or generated and the cells or organisms that die. So what we see a plateau uh, reaches in this phase is called a stationary phase. And the reason is that uh, because now the organisms here in the, in the log phase, the nutrition was ample and organisms were very, very happy. They were growing, you know, very happily. But as the, the, uh, the waste products accumulated and the nutrients become, become, became depleted, so the number of our organisms create, generating and dying uh, became almost equal. And then the stationary phase, and ultimately there is a decline in the growth because the waste product uh, would accumulate in more quantity, and that would cause the death of the cells. And this is called a decline phase or a death phase. So a growth curve basically has four phases. There's a lag phase, followed by a log phase, then there's a stationary phase, and then there's a decline phase. Now, the, one of the uses of this growth curve is that a generation time could be calculated. As we know that the bacteria multiply uh, with binary fission, that, that means that the, if there's one bacterium in the start, it would multiply into two, then two organisms would multiply into four and four into eight, and then this would keep on. This is what we call exponential growth. Um, so when we want to uh, generate or calculate the generation time, we have to target this area. So the organism has to be replicating actively in the log phase. And this is the phase we just need two uh, readings or, or two points at which we need to know how much uh, is the growth, or how much is the number of bacterium at this stage and as well as this stage, anywhere. So any two points would be enough to, to calculate the generation time. The formula for the generation time is this, that this is the, the final uh, number of organisms at certain point, and this was the initial when we started. So we take a log of the final minus the log of the initial number of organisms divided by, this is a generation we know that the binary fission creates two uh, organisms. So this is a log of two, then the total time that elapsed between those two points here. Let's say this was one point of the time here, and then after an hour or two or three, we again calculated the number. So that number is, is here, 10 hours. So the total time that we looked at the number initially was this, and the final was this. And if you calculate... In this example, it is two generations per hour. And that per hour, that means there are two generations, so one generation would be completed in 30 minutes. So this is how 
you can calculate a generation time for any bacteria. So it's a very useful calculation. So please learn this. Now, what are other uses of this growth curve? Growth, the one of the uses, as I mentioned, the generation time could be calculated. The other is the growth dynamic of any bacteria can be studied. And that is very important for when we want to produce uh, microorganisms at a mass scale, like uh, vac for vaccine production, or, or we want to keep a seed for bacteria. So when we want to preserve bacteria as a seed, we target uh, this phase, log phase, when bacteria are very active. If we wait up until the, um, the growth curve reaches stationary phase, here the bacteria are already dying. So we do not want this part of the growth curve as our seed. So preferably we need young and very active organisms here. So please keep that in mind. If you want to keep a seed, you always look for the log phase. Similarly, those bacteria taken from the log phase could be used uh, uh, for the preservation of those cultures. So in summary, a batch culture is one that is contained within a vessel where nutrients are not refreshed. Um, the growth curve follows uh, four phases. There's a lag phase followed by a log phase, then there's a stationary phase, and then there's a decline phase. And there are various uses of the growth curve. One of them is, is the generation time, a calculation of the generation time.